This may appear to be a huge garbage pit, but this shaft in the center of the Giza Plateau is yielding tremendous revelations. If you've followed our program about the holy shaft and circle, you've seen some amazing things, but even more in what you're going to see today. shot this is the center and lo and behold there's this huge thing and nobody knows what it is but we know it's the center of a sacred circle so if it is greco-roman like dr rada said and i i've gotten not into the you know the etymology of this well the greco or the romans were building on something that was probably already here because they wouldn't have just by chance hit upon the center point to a sacred circle that touches all the major monuments right around here. It just wouldn't have happened. So if they did build here, they built because something was here before, indicating that this is the zero point. And so a zero, a center of a circle, is sort of a hidden thing. You know, all the important things are on the outside of the circle. And then humbly, this little zero point stands there and doesn't get any recognition, but it's just the indication by a pit, major pit being here, that when we calculated that circle, we weren't doing science fiction. We weren't trying to invent something at Giza. To me, this pit is a confirmation that the sacred geometry we did here, not something we were trying to make, this is what is here. So there's no question in my mind but that there, even though Egyptologists don't accept this, there was a sacred plan. So let's look at this holy shaft on the Giza Plateau. Okay, so the Sphinx, Khufu, and Khafre, the two great pyramids, are all on this holy shaft, as is the tomb of Kenkawes. So this circle touches four of the major monuments on Giza in special ways. Okay, so we've seen that the radius from the holy shaft to the circle it's formed is 888 feet. Now, we could say that it's 887.04 feet because the obelisk that was probably in this shaft at one time, because it does seem to be a center for measuring, is not there now. So we can't tell exactly where the center of that shaft is. So that creates a little bit of a tolerance, but it's about 887, 888 feet. And, and really, we're doing this by deduction because it's, it's, the circle's not drawn on the Giza Plateau, but it's implied through what we're doing here. So 888 feet, when converted to metric, is 270.75 meters. Okay, now, Flinders Petrie, who's the father of Egyptology and probably whose measures are the most respected of any that have been taken in the Great Pyramid, he said the average size of the Great Pyramid, the average size of the side, was 230.35 meters. Okay, so a friend of mine, Wim Verhard, who's a mathematician in Spain, who told me, Larry, it can't be 888 feet because the Egyptians didn't know the foot. The Egyptians didn't use the foot. But then he sent me this. If you take the metric conversion of the 888 feet and divide it by the average side of the Great Pyramid, according to Petri, you get this, what I've now, I'm now calling a constant, 1.17537. It's this number, which I'm now calling alpha zeta, because it's, it's a constant. It, it's got many applications, but one which Verhart uses is you, you take that constant to the fourth power 
take the reciprocal of that, and it equals 0.52396. Now, this is the conversion that's used between cubits and meters. When you're converting cubits and meters, that's what you use. That uh, A cubit, uh, a meter is 0.52396 of a cubit. Okay. Now, it's also pi over 6. Interesting. Okay. So, uh, I asked Robert Grant about this, and he gave me this formula. So this constant, 1.17537, is a reflection of alpha, because you can see alpha in the formula. You take the reciprocal of alpha divided by 360, add 1, and take the square root of that, and you've got this constant. So it, it's, a, it's a way of looking at alpha, the fine structure constant, which is incredible. Okay, so what the main reason I'm showing this, though, don't get scared away by the math here. We're, we're, what, what I'm showing this to say that this mathematician, like other metrologists who say the Egyptians didn't know the foot, he said, gosh, maybe this shows that they did know the foot. Because the, the 888 feet, when he converted it, it's got this relationship to the Great Pyramid with this constant. And so this led the mathematicians to say to me, maybe the Egyptians could have known the foot, even though he thinks they didn't. Okay, so let's look at this. So here is where the holy circle is around uh, around that, that shaft. And so there's the radius, and it's 887.04 feet. Okay, now, Harry Sievertson is a tremendous metrologist, probably one of the leading in the world. He, his book, Measurements of the Gods, shows he understands all the different measuring systems and their relationship, the Indian, the Sumerian, you know, Chinese, uh, the Roman, the British imperial system. And so he talks about a cubit of 1.76 feet that he's recognized all around the world in, in different, uh, even in different uh, countries, different civilizations. So there is this undeniable cubit of 1.76 feet. Now I asked him what to call it. He said maybe Noatian. And that reminded me because he said it's based on Noah. Uh, it reminded me that some people use the word Noachian to refer to cubits. So let's just call it the Noachian cubit of 1.76 feet. Now where is it used? Well, Roslyn Chapel in Scotland, the mysterious chapel there, the Ark of Noah, based on at least the measurements in the Bible, Solomon's Temple, based on measurements, Chartres Cathedral in France, the Ark of the Covenant, and yes, the Khufu boat. Because it, it, there's a relationship between the Khufu boat's dimensions and the dimensions listed of the Ark in the Bible. So the beam of the arc is 50 cubits. And so 50 cubits of 1.76 feet length, in other words, this Noachian cubit, times phi equals 142.38, which is the length of the Khufu boat. So again, this cubit of 1.76 feet has got many usages throughout the world. Okay, so when we convert the 887 feet to the Noachian cubit, it's 504 exactly if we use 887.04. If we use 888, it's close to 504 Noachian cubits. Okay, so if that's the uh, radius, then the circumference would be 3,168 Noachian cubits. Well, what's so big about that? Well, if you take the perimeter of the Great Pyramid, it's 3,168 Egyptian inches, the uh, 1 18th part of the 18-inch cubit. Okay, so 3168. Okay, so now you've got this circle related to numerically the base of the Great Pyramid. What else? Okay, Stonehenge. Take the circumference of the Sarsen Circle. Okay, that is 316.8 feet. D, 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 do 3168. But again, what's this? You've got it at Stonehenge. You, you got it at the Circle of Giza. You've got it in the Great Pyramid. Well, what is it? Well, first, let's look at the circumference of the Blue Stone Circle. Okay. If you take that, it's 50.4 feet. Look at that relationship to the radius of the holy circle, 504 Noachian cubits. Okay, so now if you put a square that uh, touches tangently the four sides of the, well, not the four sides, but the four parts of the circle, so in other words, the exoscribed square, the dimensions of that square would be 79.20 feet. The perimeter would be 316.8 feet. So that would be the perimeter of the square. So again, you got the 3168. So if we put the square over here, 
that would have that would be the squaring of the circle of that circle. So let's square that circle. Okay, its dimensions would be 7,920 Noachian cubits, which is the diameter of the Earth. So you got Stonehenge, and here this holy circle signaling knowledge of the dimensions of the Earth. Wow. Wow. Now, just to show as an aside, another place here, here's the four station stone markers uh, of Stonehenge. So if you take those lengths, you've got 264 feet on the longest side. The diagonal is 286 feet, and the short side of these two triangles or this rectangle is 110 feet. Okay, so if you add those up, you get 660 feet, which is 7,920 inches. So again, we've got these monuments signaling the dimensions of the earth. Here are the diameter of the earth. It's incredible, okay? So let's just review here. So you've got the Stonehenge circles showing us the diameter of the earth, 7920. We've got the Great Pyramid showing 7920, showing its knowledge of the dimensions of the earth. And then we have this holy circle and this holy shaft showing us it knew the dimensions of the earth. Now, these two, the Great Pyramid and the Stonehenge, are both revelations from big stones. The Stonehenge stones attract people. The Great Pyramid, you know, the largest pyramid on earth, the only one of the seven wonders of the ancient world still standing, it draws people. So that a lot of people measure these things and think about these things. But the case of the Holy Shaft and Holy Circle, it's, it's a revelation from hidden geometry. It's not a big monument attracting our attention. It's this humble, homely shaft. And yet, it's connected to so many things. And again, it's signaling they knew the dimensions of the earth long before they were supposedly found by the Greeks. The holy shaft. Incredible. And there's more. But I'm not going to talk about that today. There's even more in this holy shaft this humble, insignificant question mark shaft. Okay, please stay tuned.